Okay, this is going to be a video on the ratio test. And if you look up the ratio test in your book, uh, this is what you'll get. It looks like this. Now, in, for most students, they can find that the ratio test is not that difficult to work with. As a matter of fact, they can actually take a ratio test, execute the ratio test, get an answer, and off they go. The problem is, even if you've got that answer, for a lot of students, it's hard to understand exactly what the ratio test is and why it works the way it does. So in this video, rather than working a specific example, all we're going to do is look at the ratio test and look at it graphically and try to get a feel, make sure you understand why it works, not only the fact that you can just work with it. So to begin with, what I do, when you look at the ratio test, let's just kind of run through it. It says that if you have an original series, and it doesn't have to be a positive series, it could have negative terms, just can't have any zero terms. Then it looks like this says, if you find the limit of the ratio of two consecutive terms is less than one, <clears throat> then the series converges. If it's greater than one, it diverges. And if it's equal to one, the ratio test fails. Um, now, to begin with, when you look at this, the first thing that should come to mind for most people is this, <clears throat> is just looking at this part in here. If you have a sub n plus one divided by a sub n, Something should be going off in your memory, and you should be going, you know, I've seen that somewhere before in our study of series, but where have I seen it? And where you've seen it is actually this. So a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n shows up first in the geometric series test. Now, this is one of the first tests that you learn. It was an easy test to learn, and it was actually a very easy test to understand. And just a reminder of what it was, um, the ratio is the ratio. And this is where that a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n shows up right here. So the ratio is any two consecutive terms. If a sub n is the first term, a sub n plus 1 will be the next term. And if you have a geometric series test, and this is important, that ratio was a constant. Then remember what the rule said. If that ratio is less than 1, the series converges. If that ratio was greater than or equal to 1, then the series diverges. Now, the first thing you should notice is, in several respects, this thing looks like uh, the ratio test. Both of them involve a ratio of two consecutive terms. And then, if that ratio is less than one, the series converges. Well, in this test, if the limit to the ratio is less than one, the series converges. Then, in this test, if the series is greater than one, the series diverges. In the ratio test, if the limit to the series is greater than one, <coughs> Uh, then the series diverges. Now, where they differ is what happens if it's equal to 1. We'll come back to that in just a little bit. Um, now, also, you might notice, too, this thing does involve absolute values. And all that's for, we won't get too much into that on this one, but all the absolute value does is changes it from a series that might have some negative numbers into an all-positive series. And if you can show that it converges, then you can actually show that it converges absolutely. But the problem is this. What does this it's easy to understand what the ratio of two consecutive terms is, but it's not so easy to picture what the limit to the ratio of two consecutive terms is. And I've always found the best way to do this, I think, is to do this, is to take the ratio test and the geometric series test, put them right together side by side, <coughs> compare them, and you can begin to see the difference in the two. So let's do this. Let's start with the geometric series test, and we'll write some things that they have in common and some things that they don't. So if you've got a geometric series test, you know this. You know that the ratio, and it's always the ratio of two consecutive terms. So you'll have a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. <laughs> now, in a geometric series test, remember, this is a constant. And it's just in the definition of a geometric test. Now, let's set this up to show you what one of them might look like. Yeah. Here's a geometric series, and I think I'll do it like this, is I want to find the ratio. Now, the ratio in this geometric series will turn out to be 1 half, and you can get it from there. All that means is if you multiply the first term times 1 half, then you get the second term. If you take the second term, multiply that times 1 half, then you get the next term times 1 half, and so on. So if you multiply any term by the common ratio, then you get the next term. Now, if you were to plot these points, you would get these blue points right here. So what this would be, this is a, uh, this is going to be a geometric series. And in this particular case, the common ratio is 1 half. And that ratio is a constant. Now, let's compare that to what the ratio test says. The ratio test also starts with, it has a ratio of two consecutive terms. So a sub n plus 1 
and it divides by a sub n. But rather than just being the ratio, it takes the limit. So we'll go back to just look at the rule. You've got the ratio. You've got the limit of the ratio. So rather than taking the ratio, you're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of this ratio. And again, we'll go ahead and put the absolute values on there, but all that means is just this positive. So really, for all practical purposes, this absolute value will have no effect on what we're talking about. Now here's, the different, here's a couple of big differences in these two. On this one, the ratio, and I think I'll do it like this, this ratio was a constant. And this is the first place that the geometric series test and the ratio test separate. But on this one, if you've just got a series that's not necessarily geometric, then that ratio is not a constant. Now again, this is where it begins to confuse students sometimes when you get finished. So in a geometric series test, uh, the ratio is a constant. In just any old test or any old series using the ratio test, there's no guarantee, and in fact it probably won't be, a constant. But if you can show that the limit is a constant, now let's go ahead and, and we'll graphically show it. At this point, it's probably still a little bit confusing. Let's see what this thing means. So again, I'm going to go back over here and let's picture what happens between these two right here. So looking at a geometric test, if this was n, and we'll put it uh, right here, if I had... Um, And let's see here, I'll go right here. So if this is n, then this next term would be n plus 1. Now, what that means is the, if the ratio is 1 half, if this height right here, whatever this height right here is, it's half as much as the height before it. So this height divided by this height, and that ratio turned out to be 1 half. I'm going to go ahead and put 0.5. Now, wherever you pick it, if you pick between 4 and 5, the ratio between these two is also 0.5. If you come between 7 and 8, the ratio of these two is also 0.5. If you went way out here to 10 and 11, the ratio of these is 0.5. So what that means is, in this entire interval, if you've got a geometric series, in this entire interval, from start to finish, the ratio is a constant. Now, suppose we had another series. Let's go ahead and just put this series up here. Suppose you had a series that kind of, it's going to have more or less the same shape, but not quite. We'll put it something like this and goes down. Uh, whoops, I'm going to put this one here, here. Let's get rid of that one. Um, does this, and it, it does this. But this is not necessarily a geometric series. Now, what it means is this. What, graphically, what does it mean? So if you want to find the limit of this. Now, on this one, the ratio between, no matter where you pick the points, the ratio was always a constant 0.5. On this one, you might have a situation that looks like this. If this was n, early on you might have this. The ratio between this height and this height, and let's just give it a number. Let's suppose that this one is 0.4. Then, between 4 and 5 here, it was a constant. Between 4 and 5, let's suppose the ratio between here and here is 0.45. Now, the point is, it's not a constant. Uh, between the first term, it was 0.4. Between these two terms, it's 0.5. Let's suppose we went out to 7 and 8. If you went out to 7 and 8, suppose it turned out to be 0.49. And then supposedly, way off here to the right, suppose it is approaching... And you can kind of look at it until 0 0.4, 0 0.45, 0 0.49. This ratio is approaching 0.5. Now, it's never exactly 0.5, but it's approaching 0.5. So what this is, this is, we'll call this just a value of L to give it a name. And that tells you up here that this thing is approaching some L. In this case, it's 0.5. Now you can begin to make the following argument. What will happen is there's some point in here, and uh, we'll kind of just draw a line through it, say about right in here, and where you pick the point's entirely up to you. But in this interval from here to here, clearly the ratio is not constant. It changes completely. But then something happens. Once you get to some n out here, it could be anywhere, but once you get to some n from here on out toward a positive infinity, 
the ratio uh, is approaching a constant. So what this means is, in a geometric series, or actually it looks like this, is since in your series, which is not geometric, if you go way off to the right, since the ratio is approaching a constant, and you can kind of do it in sort of green right here, is way off to the right, this part of the series begins to behave exactly like this geometric series. So if the geometric series has a ratio of 0.5 and your series is approaching a ratio of 0.5, they'll behave exactly the same way. And what this means then is that if you go way off to the right, the behavior of a geometric is almost like the behavior of this. And that's kind of what this means. So ultimately, a geometric series has a constant ratio no matter where you pick the terms. If you have a non-geometric ratio, you could have a situation like this. The ratio is not a constant, so it's, it's 4.45.4 in it. So it's not a constant early on as long as it settles in on a constant like this. So if you go way off to the right, if this ratio is approaching a constant, then you can make some claims about whether it converges or not. Now again, it shouldn't concern you that by the fact that the ratio is not a constant here because with all these, on all series, you're just concerned about what happens as you go way off to the right. Anything that happens in here uh, really doesn't matter as long as it settles down here. So now with that in mind, let's go back to the ratio test and take a look at it. What the ratio test really says is this. You've got a ratio, and you only want to know if you go way off to the right, what's happening to that ratio. And suppose it settles on two-thirds then two-thirds is less than one, so you'll be able to claim that this series converges just like a geometric series converges. And then let's take one more look then at the geometric series. Um, they look very similar to it. And the only difference is, in a geometric series, the ratio is a constant through the entire range. On a ratio series test, the ratio doesn't have to be a constant as long as it settles in on a constant as you go way off to the right. Now, the other difference is this. Again, if it's less than one, it converges. If it's greater than one, it diverges. But remember, the last case is different. If it, in a geometric series, if it's equal to one, it diverges. In a ratio test, if it's equal to one, then the test fails. You can't make any claim. So hopefully that gives you a little bit better understanding of what this means right here. And now you understand why a ratio test behaves very similar to a uh, geometric series test. Now let's take a look at one more thing before we go on to the next uh, video where we'll do some more um, problems. And let me this and we'll go to right here. Now what happens is, whenever you work with a ratio test, your teacher will probably tell you that the ratio test works great for problems involving factorials and exponentials. Let's just real quickly take a look at why that is. And it's, it's true, by the way. So if you have a series that involves factorials, or if you have a series that involves exponentials, the problem is this. This factorial is going to give you a lot of problems. This exponential in is going to give you a lot of problems. But watch what happens in both cases when you uh, do a ratio test. Now the ratio test, at some point, it's going to involve two consecutive terms. So you'll have a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. And what that's going to be, if you had this, if the original thing was n, plus, n factorial, then what n plus 1 means is everywhere you've got an n, replace it with an n plus 1 factorial. And you're going to compare these. Now we've done this before working with factorials. Anytime you've got a factorial, you can expand it. So I'll write this as n plus 1. And then all the remaining terms, it would be like n factorial, which would be n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on. So you can write n plus 1 as n plus 1 times n factorial. Now what that does is this. is That allows you this n factorial and this n factorial cancel out, and it gives you n plus 1. So the idea is, in the original problem, if you started with a factorial, it's going to give you a lot of problems. When you apply the ratio test, it'll knock the factorial out of the problem. And it does pretty much the same thing down here. If you start with this, let's go a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. Well, that would be 5 to the n plus 1 divided by 5 to the n. But in the process of working the problems now, you'll have this. 5 to the n plus 1 can be rewritten as 5 to the n times 
5 to the 1. Remember, you add the exponents. Divided by 5 to the n. Then the 5 to the n's cancel out, and you're left with just a 5. So look at what happens. In this. If you have a factorial problem, the ratio test will knock out the factorial. If you have an exponential problem, the ratio test will knock out the exponential, and in both cases you wind up with something really easy to work with, and that's why the ratio test is so great for factorials and exponentials. So you might remember that if when you're trying to pick certain tests. So again, one last thing is that this is what the ratio test is, very similar in some respects to the geometric series test. The only difference is you want to know what's happening to this ratio as you go way off to the right. That's what this thing actually says. So hopefully that improves your understanding of the ratio test just a little bit.